Welcome to a Learning in 10 series. I am Dr. Jenny Low, Infectious Diseases Consultant with the Department of Infectious Diseases at Singapore General Hospital. We will be touching on the subject of primary syphilis today. Upon completion of this presentation, you will be able to describe the transmission and pathogenesis of Trypanema pallidum, discuss the clinical manifestations of primary syphilis, identify common methods used in the diagnosis of primary syphilis, list the common treatment regimens for primary syphilis, and appreciate the importance of prevention counseling messages for patients with primary syphilis. The topic outline is as follow, transmission and pathogenesis, signs and symptoms of primary syphilis, laboratory diagnosis of primary syphilis, treatment of primary syphilis, and finally prevention. Syphilis is transmitted via sexual and vertical routes. It is most contagious to sex partners during the primary and secondary stages. The etiological agent is Tryponema pallidum, subspecies pallidum. It is a corkscrew-shaped, motile, microaerophilic bacterium. It is important to remember that the bacterium cannot be cultured in vitro and cannot be viewed by normal light microscopy. It can only be visualized via specialized dark field microscopy. Tryponema pallidum enters the body via skin and mucous membranes through abrasions during sexual contact or via the placenta from mother to fetus during pregnancy. It then disseminates via the lymphatic system to regional lymph nodes and then throughout the body via the bloodstream. Invasion of the central nervous system can occur during any stage of syphilis. At the site of inoculation, a primary lesion called a shanka develops after infection. The shanka progresses from a macule to a papule and finally to an ulcer. It is classically described as a painless indurated ulcer with a clean base. This lesion is highly infectious. Over a course of one to six weeks, the lesion heals spontaneously even without any treatment. Occasionally, multiple lesions may be present. Regional painless rubbery bilateral lymph adenopathy may be present. Laboratory diagnosis of primary syphilis depends on identification of Tryponema pallidum in lesions via dark field microscopy or direct fluorescent antibody testing. Serologic tests, both non-tryponema tests and tryponema tests may not be positive in the primary stage of the infection. On the dark field microscopy, one looks for tryponema pallidum morphology and motility. The advantage is a definite immediate diagnosis. There are several disadvantages. The test requires specialized equipment and an experienced microscopist. There can be possible confusion with other pathogenic and non-pathogenic spirochetes. And the test must be performed immediately. The test is generally not recommended for oral lesions. And there is a possibility of false negative on this test. On direct fluorescent antibody, one looks for Tryponema pallidum in direct lesions smeared by immuno immunofluorescence. The advantages are that the test is commercially available and it compares favorably with dark field microscopy. The disadvantage for this test is that there is a turnaround time of one to two days. Therapy for primary syphilis is benzatine penicillin G 2.4 million units intramuscularly in a single dose. If the patient is allergic to penicillin, doxycycline 100 mg orally twice daily for 14 days or tetracycline 500 mg orally four times daily for 14 days 
are the alternatives. Of note, penicillin allergic patients with syphilis and HIV whose compliance cannot be ensured should be desensitized and treated with penicillin. All patients who have syphilis should be tested for HIV infection. And consider screening patients with syphilis for other STDs based on risk. Patients should receive counseling and education on the nature of the disease, its transmission, the treatment and follow-up required, as well as risk reduction. Sex partners of syphilis patients should be examined and have a serology test performed and therapy instituted accordingly. All pregnant women should have at least one screening test done at first prenatal visit. Screening of other at-risk population depends on local prevalence and patient's risk behavior. In summary, syphilis is transmitted sexually or via transplacenta route. Primary syphilis is highly contagious. Triponema pallidum cannot be cultured. Identification is via direct visualization of the organisms on dark field microscopy commonly. Treatment of syphilis is with a single dose of benzodine penicillin or doxycycline or tetracycline. Patient counseling, screening of pet partners, and routine screening pregnant women are important public health measures to reduce disease prevalence and transmission in the population.